testifies to what she did and uh, how frequently she performed massages or whatever, or performs them, whatever the plan is. Um, so that's uh, partially granted. Um, I think the main, your main concern was about opinions. her opinions about causation and, and, and uh, permanency and things like that, and that's granted. Uh, as to the building plans, contracts, and the bills and invoices on drafting, I really think that's another matter that needs to be dealt with on uh, sort of the jury out uh, to, to hear what you're going to, how you're going to offer <coughs> that. That will all come in through Mr. Crawford, is that right? It will, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't we just do that as a, uh, um, uh, prior to his testimony, we'll take a jury out. Mr. Freeman, the onus is on you to alert me to the fact that you have a matter of law to take up at that time. I'll send the jury out. You can ask your uh, summary questions of those topics. Uh, and then, Mr. Gilmore, if you have any other questions about you can, I'll make a ruling whether they're admissible or not. Your Honor, <coughs> no, I was hoping in my opening statement that I could shed light on that issue with with the jury, you know, you pull out the plans and so forth. Um, as to the other issues, uh, I'm waiting on that. All right, well, we, we're waiting for the jury to come in. Let's go on. Mr. Crawford, come on back up. You're still under oath, sir. Okay. I'm going to hand you these plans that you could tell Judge what those plans represent. Uh, what they represent is one of the projects that uh, that I have completed for clients in Williamson County, Joe and Beth Bandcamper. Uh, and what they show is the level of detail, hand drawing that I do. Plus, also, uh, it has uh, drawings in here that were done that I had to hire somebody else to help me do because I'm not physically able to climb up on ladders and measure roof pitches and things like that. That's done in what's in this set called the as-built drawings. The house is a remodeling project <coughs> and uh, an addition project. There are several pages in here of hand-drawn details that are very tedious very intense, um, have to be done very close up work, uh, it's high level of concentration, uh, and it shows a lot about the detail work that I do and the professionalism that I do in the work. And that's the basis, Your Honor, for introducing that so that the jury can get an understanding of what it is he is required to do and the detail. Do you have any questions of witness in the board? No, Your Honor. Okay. Let's go, go on to your next to your uh, contracts and, uh, with clients and uh, bills and invoices. Okay. Can you describe for the judge the, uh, the one invoice that we would be submitting? Uh, it was for $2,600 to the extent. So why did you need uh, to hire somebody to do that? Again, uh, that was for another job uh, for uh, Mitch and Kathy Warren who had bought an existing home partially completed uh, and abandoned. Uh, they wanted me to completely redesign the project. And in order for me to design anything, I have to know what's there to begin with. Um, and I, again, could not go out there, measure all the windows, the doors, the ceiling heights, the roof pitches, all of those things. I was not physically able to do it, so I hired a company that does this type of work and draws it up and gives it to me and I can use that as a basis for all my design work after that. If I had not have been able to hire someone like that to do that, that kind of work, then I would not be able to do an accurate design, architectural plans. Um, they would be off. It would be a, just a best guesstimate uh, as to the dimensions, again, the elevations, the locations of the doors, the windows, the electrical that was there, the roof pitch, the dormers, hundreds and hundreds of details go into a set of as-built drawings, which you have to have before you get, begin any design work. And did you ever hire anybody before the accident to do that type of work? No. No more any questions on that? Yes, there are. Mr. Crawford, uh, this <coughs> document here was faxed to me for the first time yesterday. Um, Maybe Saturday. Well, it was Saturday. I got it yesterday. 
um, or at least I'll take your word for it that it was Saturday. Um, is that when you provided it to Mr. Freeman? Was just in the last few days? I don't recall. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, you were. Is this the only uh, document that you provided to Mr. Freeman that that deals with, that evidence is uh, on that particular job? It is. I've got other invoices for other jobs. Have you provided those to Mr. Freeman? Yes, another one I did. Just one more? As I recall, yes. Okay. And uh, you were present at the deposition of your expert, Mr. Mensel? Correct. And you heard him testify that he had based his opinions on about the cost of a draftsman on what you had verbally told him. Do you recall that? No, I don't recall exactly how he had based that opinion. Well, if the record shows that Mr. Mensel, uh, that you had told Mr. Mensel that you needed a draftsman at so much an hour, so many hours a week, and that that was the basis of his opinion and not any actual documents like this, <coughs> do you have any reason to disagree with that? I don't know how David had come up with the figure. I know that when David audited all my checking accounts, he specifically pulled out some of the canceled checks for people like this and asked me what it was for, and I had to go into t detail and explain to him that this check was for this person to do this type of work. Okay. And have all of the invoices, that, or both of the invoices, that you provided to Mr. Freeman, have they just been in the last week or so? I don't recall. I've had them in a separate file for months. Do you recall how, how recently you provided those to Mr. Freeman? No, I don't. And this, this invoice is for $2,600. Is it, uh, do you know how much the other invoice is for? Several hundred dollars. I can't recall exactly how much it is. Well, are you saying, sir, that the, the two invoices, is that what you're claiming as uh, what you've had to lay out of pocket for a draftsman because of this accident? Or no. is it, or is it some, some estimate that Mr. Mensel is making? Mr. Mensel will have to address that as far as the damages, but as a result of this accident, I have had to hire outside people to do work that I can no longer do. I understand. And, and my question is, as it relates to the draftsman, um, is, is what you're claiming the $2,600 in this invoice and then the few hundred dollars in the other invoice that I don't have? What's your question? My question is, as it relates to drafting and what you have to pay for, what you've had to pay to date to draftsmen because of this accident, then is that reflected by this $2,600 plus the other invoice that, you, that I don't have? Again, you know, you're going to have to ask Mr. Menzel about that. I don't think in his report and his analysis he addresses these two charges per se as part of the damages. I think he addresses the fact that I will now have to hire somebody from now on to do this type of work as far as the impact on every job that I do. That's all I have, Your Honor. And, you know, the purpose of this is not to necessarily establish the loss of $2,600. It's to, just to establish to the jury that he has had to hire people that he didn't in the past. <coughs> you want to address the bills and invoices? Um, any, other, any others? Oh, the, I think the issue of think was the contract. Or contract with the class, sorry. Yeah. Um, Mr. Crawford, can you explain to the court the uh, you had several contracts before uh, the accident happened? If you can uh, explain to the court uh, how those contracts were developed and when you got paid and when the work was done. Well, first of all, the issue of the contracts addresses the fact that I do things under contract. Uh, it's not just a verbal agreement to do anything, and it outlines how I am paid, how the fee is arrived at, uh, what I do to earn that fee. Uh, also, these contracts, some of them are signed before the accident where I had work before, and that shows a pattern that I had a lot of work 
from the drafting board under contract. Another contract shows when I started back to work, specifically the one that I addressed earlier about Mitch Warren, the house that they bought that had been abandoned, that I had to hire somebody to go out and measure and get me a set of plans for that. And I think it's important because it will also show that I had things under contract and on the board, but I didn't collect the money for those contracts until after the accident. Immediately after the accident, I had income from those, but those were generated before the accident. And then also, the new contract for the Warrens was done after the accident when I started back to work, and that will show a date when I was first able to start back working. Have you provided those contracts to your attorney? Yes. Do you know why he hasn't provided them to me? No, I don't. Nothing further. Any other questions? You may step down, sir. Thank you. Mr. Gilmour, is part of your objection then that you have not received this documentation 72 hours before trial or in accordance with an interrogatory request? It is. It is. I'm not sure that he actually specifically requested that information in the interrogatory, but again, the purpose of raising that issue in my exhibit list was for rebuttal purposes only, and he has not asked to see those. He's not made a formal, he hasn't called and said, hey, can I see those contracts? We can make those available to him, Your Honor. So you are not going to offer these contracts in your case in chief? No. The purpose behind it is if they're going to raise this issue that, well, you had money coming in, so you weren't really out of work for six months. Well, yes, he was out of work for approximately six months. And to the extent they question all of that, then the contracts will come in, as he testified, that there was a point in time when he entered into new contracts, and if need be, we can establish that through those documents. Just to be clear, you're not going to offer this in your direct proof? I am not, Your Honor. You're saving it for the event of cross-examination you feel opens the door to use that in redirect? Yes, Your Honor. No more. Your Honor, I do have a standard interrogatory where I ask for any documents that support a lost or incapacity claim. So I still haven't seen these things. And under the local rules, I haven't gone back and looked at exactly how it's worded, but I think if you file your exhibit list on Friday, which was done in this case, the burden is not on me necessarily to go and go up to Mr. Freeman's office and look at those things, particularly where the exhibit list doesn't say that they're attached or they're available or anything like that. I haven't seen any of this stuff, and I'm kind of surprised by it, and that's really the basis of my objection. Mr. Gilmour and I have gotten along quite well during this litigation, and I have made attempts to provide him all information that he has wanted, even to the extent that he's forwarded me an interrogatory request, and within days I've provided him with the information. I haven't waited 30 days. So to the extent there may have been a miscommunication on these contracts, I apologize to him and to the court, but I've provided him with my witness list, and I think that's all I can do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilmour. Thank you, Mr. Gilmour.